So we've talked a lot about the effects microgravity has uh, on the human body. Now we're going to really focus on uh, what the lack of an atmosphere does. Now, keeping in mind, the lack of an atmosphere means a lack of an atmospheric pressure, and that changes things. Now, uh, just to note, um, and as a warning over the next kind of couple of sections, uh, some of the content can be distressing. We will talk about fatalities uh, and injuries in space, um, so please be aware. Uh, and that is because the only people who have actually died in space is the Soyuz 11 mission. Uh, so the three cosmonauts on Soyuz 11, uh, as they were preparing for re-entry, so that is as their capsule was coming back down to Earth, uh, they suffered a depressurization uh, in their spacecraft. So if you imagine this, so you know, you're on an airplane and they say we're pressurizing or pressurizing the cabinet for your com comfort. Well, that on Earth, um, you lose a little bit of pressure as you go up uh, in the atmosphere at 8 to 10 kilometers where airplanes fly. But that's really, your body will be fine. Um, but yes, it won't be comfortable. Um, in space, when you essentially have no pressure from the atmosphere, as we talked about in the first section, you physically go through changes. Uh, and so the, the cabins and the spacecraft have to be pressurized. Otherwise, you literally won't survive. And as the capsule was re-entering, um, they had a failure in a system which caused the cabin spacecraft, the inside, to depressurize, meaning all of the air and pressure dropped and it physically decompressed the insides, including their body. And it was a terrible, terrible tragedy. Uh, I made the kind of note that they are the only ones to die in space. We obviously had the disasters with the space shuttle Challenger uh, in 1986 as it was launching and the space shuttle Columbia disaster in 2003 as it was re-entering. Both of those were inside the Earth's atmosphere and the sufferings of depressurization um, were different and also they technically didn't die in space. Uh, the Soyuz 11 is definitely one of the terrible tragedies in space travel. Now, as we talked about in the beginning, um, when you go into space, the pressure drops. Now, if you can relate back to simple physics, as the pressure changes, that means the volume must go change. So pressure and volume are proportionate. So if the pressure is going to go one way, the volume is going to go the other way. Now, we can kind of see this with, you know, if you take a water bottle on an airplane, uh, a half-empty water bottle will squish. In space, what this means is as the pressure changes, the volume changes inside the human body. Uh, there's a lot of fluid in the human body. So if the pressure changes and your volume can't change, the only other thing that can change is temperature. So pressure is proportionate to volume and temperature. And this is the big important thing. You can't change the volume inside your body, meaning that you're going to change the temperature. Now, why does this matter? If you've ever heard the expression, maybe if you use it yourself, blood boiling. Well, blood can boil at a certain temperature. If your pressure changes, i.e. in space, but the volume doesn't, i.e. you're not going to lose blood in your body, then the temperature has to compensate for this change of the pressure, meaning the temperature will skyrocket in your body. And it does so with the fluids, and then therefore the temperature can change in such a way that your blood reaches a point it can literally boil. It is a very terrible, terrible situation. Um, and again, we're not going to dawn on this too much, but this is a real problem associated with space. And one of the big issues that you have to pressurize everything. And if you lose that pressurization, as we saw in the Soyuz 11 mission, it ends in disaster. Our body is essentially water. 66% of our body is made up of water. And water can exist in three different forms. So it can exist in water, it can exist in uh, ice, and it can exist in steam. And those transition points, um, water will go to ice at zero degrees, it will go boil at 100 degrees. That's very dependent about the fact that we're at sea level. 
If you start taking the body to a different uh, pressure, it, this will have, have a different effect. So, we know about the human body. The human body sits at about 36, 37 degrees. So, that's very nice. At sea level, the human body uh, pretty much exists in a liquid form. Our blood is liquid, it circulates as a liquid. If you take the human body and you take it high enough that the pressure drops to a certain high, uh, amount, which happens to be around 19 kilometres above the surface of the Earth, the human body will stop being in the liquid phase of this diagram and it will move to the gas part of the diagram. And that means that the human body will literally boil. Your blood will boil in space. Um, it's not just an expression where you get angry. Your blood can literally boil. Um, the other thing about this is there's liquid in a few different areas. One of the areas which will boil first is actually your eyes. The front, uh, inside your eyes um, is a lot of liquid. Um, the vitreous of your eyes will boil very quickly. The retina at the back probably will still work for a few minutes and you'll actually be able to see your eyes boiling in front of your retina and your brain. Oh, wow, that's just terrible. Um, as we said, there's a couple of contents that will be distressing as we talk, um, so please be aware.